Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Interview with Stephen Alvin. Today on Interview with Stephen Alvin, we'll be giving a search light on how to overcome phobia for mathematics. To talk to us on that, my guest is Mr. Roulette. He is a mathematics uh, pundit and has been teaching mathematics for over six years. At present, he is engaged with OSC's Canadian school, the only Canadian offshore school in Nigeria. He is, he has an appreciable uh, expertise in mathematics and he teaches effortlessly. It won't be an overright embarrassment to say he is a congenital mathematician. Mr. Roland, welcome to interview with Stevie. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. My pleasure to have you here too. Um, I'm glad to have my listeners and viewers over there. Thank you, viewers, this evening. Okay, all right. Once again, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, to uh, get uh, the ball uh, rolling. Now, uh, why did you uh, study uh, mathematics? Uh, did you study mathematics because you loved and uh, wanted to? Or it a uh, lucrative and prestigious status in the educational uh, landscape of uh, inform or influence your choice of mathematics? <clears throat> okay, um, let me start from this way. Um, I hated mathematics like every an average Nigerian student who hate maths, mm -hmm. and especially in the junior school. Um, right from my middle school, that is from JS1 through JS3, I never appreciated the subject. Mm -hmm. And then fortunately for me, I was put in that way that I was the class prefect uh, from JS1 through JS3. So, and in those days, when it gets to the mathematics period, you did head teacher, the head um, prefect of, this, of the class, you have to go um, to, for the teacher to come to your class. So when it gets to that period, I did not, I, I wouldn't want to go. Why? Because I didn't like the subject. And um, I think the phobia for that was created chiefly by my environment. So I never liked mathematics. Oh, oh okay, oh, okay, okay. Now, let's not go there yet, okay? I know you want to, okay. Uh, already you have started, you have not just <coughs> into uh, the, uh, the course of what uh, does are uh, necessitate of uh, the uh, the phobia for mathematics, you know, as you already know, or you already are already aware. And uh, before a doctor administer uh, a medication or a treatment to a patient, he or she uh, diagnoses uh, the ailment uh, first before administering the medication. So uh, I know we are talking about how to overcome phobia, but first I would uh, like us, uh, like you to tell us. Uh, what is responsible, the factors that are responsible for the phobia for mathematics. Now, uh, why do students have phobia for mathematics? Is it that they, those who teach uh, mathematics uh, employ uh, incongruent or inappropriate approaches or the subject is difficult in itself? Well, <clears throat> I must say there are myriads and a plethora of um, reasons students have phobia for this. Um, but before we, I delve into different um, reasons students tend to have phobia for mathematics, um, there is also a nucleus first I must have to confront before we get to those different reasons. Okay. Um, Mathematics is, though some see it as an abstract subject, but it's not as abstract as we think because mathematics is what we eat, we discuss, we sleep mathematics every day of our life, of our lives. You talk about buying, you talk about selling, you talk about getting change whenever you go to you go for purchase, you talk about balance. So everything here in life is, I mean, mathematics is subsumed in everyday life as far as we are concerned. But why do students really get to have phobia for this? Like I said, let me hit the nucleus. Mathematics is more of an analytical and a logical subject. That means it has to do with some amount of thinking, 
And averagely, humans are lazy at thinking. In fact, if everybody had been given to thinking, um, we, we would, this world would be a better place, you know. But people would rather delve into their negative issues, think about what has happened to them now. But critical thinking of problem solving is elusive, much more elusive in our society. So, and mathematics has to do with critical thinking and analytical thinking. So you have to think for you to connect some dots so that some problems will be solved. So average life, like I said, humans find it difficult to actually think. And you look at technological advancement, you get to know that it is, it is because certain persons start down to think. And that is how problems technologically have been solved. So if you can sit and think, you know, we'll solve much problems in this world today. Now, mathematics is a subject that has to do with thinking. You have to sit down, analyze certain things, logical, have some logical connections of certain things, then you can solve problems. Now, um, people rather prefer listening to stories, um, at times doing things, but before you can put one metal and the other together, you will have to have some, some logical thoughts, okay? So I think that is the basic thing, that is our, that is the foundation of um, the resurrection of Hobbia in mathematics. Okay. Well, thank you uh, very much uh, for, uh, for that. Um, now, if you grant me, okay. um, I will want now to go into the other ramifications of uh, the cause or the reason for Hobbia. Okay. Having pointed out that um, we, we are lazy at thinking. Now, um, when, it gets, when it comes to mathematics in, class, in classes, first, our environment has caused that problem. You know, we, I told you where from the beginning that uh, in my junior class, junior school, I never liked math. Yes, and you and did. Why did you say that? So, so why did I say that? Um, why would a young child who just started school start saying that they don't like math? They might have gotten that information from somewhere. Somebody might have told them that mathematics is difficult, you know. So we got that information from the society. As we get into school, we start looking, oh, this thing I have been told. We may not consciously say this out, but inside of us, we know that somebody had told us. We've been schooled by someone, probably even by our parents, our friends and all that, that math is difficult, mm -hmm. you know. Because of that, we start, and you know that, information given to you, if somebody does not, re if you do not relearn or unlearn that information, it will be grounded in you. And as you continue internalizing it, you start living in accordance with the perceived difficulty you've seen in it, or the perceived simplicity, depending on the information you've gotten. Okay, so, well, uh, given what you say, I can deduce that uh, one of the factors of giving rise to is a wrong orientation then so there has to be a radicalization of that uh, orientation that is it. okay okay i wouldn't i for now okay. i'm not there into the methodology of okay. teaching okay. because you ask a question if uh, maybe it's due to um uh, some teachers are not using the approaches approach yes, uh, approach yes, yes that is also a factor you know especially in a nigerian factor that everybody who lives who since there are no jobs, everybody wants to be a teacher. So if whether you read home economics, whether you read agriculture, you want to be a mathematics teacher. When you are not grounded, so how can you teach math? And you struggle to get one plus one as you come, you give to you give you give the students the, the way you've gotten it. You do not have different methods of presenting or solving the same problem. So the student become um, I mean it becomes less or what more or less what we call a rote learning as an ROT learning, you know, as it's something you recite. But why can't you present mathematics such that you make it and um, you bring a methodology that will make it very interesting to the students, you know, and that are ah, just like every other subject is taught our students, uh, do pay attention, rapt attention to get the knowledge. Present mathematics that same way. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, so methodology counts a lot. And sometimes even the teachers themselves teach mathematics the way they teach. They make it look very difficult. Difficult, yeah. You know? yeah. And some I I have always heard some of my friends have always said that mathematics teachers are very stern. 
Okay, <laughs> they don't wear a friendly uh, face. Oh. Okay, it's very strange. And this time it's actually about tests, 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 all those things that yeah. made for the especially when the student, the student had not been incorporated into the simplicity of the subject. Well, mm -hmm. you, you know, with, with utmost candor, with utmost candor, personally, I didn't like mathematics. Mm -hmm. I was not good at mathematics. And that today, I seem to be apprehensive of mathematics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, well, thank you uh, very much. Okay, yes, now, um, Okay, you have told us the diagnosis of the remote cause. Okay, the remote cause of uh, phobia for mathematics. Okay, so now that we have known the cause uh, of phobia for mathematics, so how do you recommend? How can our students, you know, overcome? How can they conquer this uh, phobia for mathematics? Okay, um, first of all. I think our students, you know, when you present a, um, a subject as an, as an option, um, people will look at it, ah, if, this, if mathematics is an option, and of course it will require me to think, then I better get a subject course, a subject, go to a subject that will not cause me to be thinking too much, therefore, you keep it away. But mathematics is just beyond writing your board examinations or your, uh, or your external exam. It goes beyond that. So, first, present to the students, to your children, mm -hmm. that maths is a very important subject mm -hmm. in our life. We deal with it every day. We deal with it every day. Um, the reason, well, uh, we may say, well, maths is for science students, you know, maths is for that. I, let me just, before I continue, let me just give you um, an experience. Experience is not just what happens to you, but what you, you see from the environment, too. Okay. Um, I I saw a man who studied law, and um, after he went to the field for some time, he practiced, but he went back to school to study mathematics. Oh, why did he go back to school? A school legal practitioner. A legal practitioner going back to school to study mathematics. Why did he go back? Why did he go back to study mathematics? Was it for industrial use? Was it for him? Was it? Uh, was he looking for nomenclature to become a mathematician? No. Mathematics has to do with logical reasoning. If you can solve problems in mathematics, then even in the court, you'll be able to, to be very logical and uh, analytical. So he went to study mathematics because he knows with his study of mathematics, he will be, able, he will be very logical. The way he confronts problems, the way he analyzes them, Will just be extraordinary compared to his counterparts, you know. So mathematics gives you an edge. Now, taking away the phobia, let the children know that mathematics is applied in all fields of life, wherever you are, whatever is your car career in life. Okay, okay, that's me. Okay, uh, as far as that is one mathematics. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sir. The next. Let them bring, let teachers, in fact, for those who are teaching maths, let them know that. Um, I mean, uh, before you, you employ anybody to teach maths, know, be sure that that person is grounded in mathematics so that it will be interesting for the students while they teach, while they dispense this um, learning experience. People should employ, teachers should employ good methodology while dispensing this knowledge too. And um, don't instill this fear in students. Sometimes mistakes are necessary. But you know, when a student um, makes mistakes and solving problems, you start scolding the student and quarreling, you are not good enough. Let the child know that mathematical solutions have to do with certain mistakes too. And that is from where that is where they grow, you know. So we should employ good methods, good teachers, employ good methodology, bring mathematical games, make mathematics fun. You see that students will be, will be loving to study it. Okay, uh, well, okay, thank you very much. You know, I, I was going to ask you how is mathematics are uh, important in our daily life, but you have already uh, talked about that, so I wouldn't have, like to have or broach on uh, that a, again. So, um, now, uh, don't you think uh, that mathematics should be made, you know, optional and not a requirement, to, uh, not a requirement for entry to a university, especially for those who want to study arts or do arts? Okay, um, I wish I had the authority 
to say this, to say it should be done or not. But let me leverage on the authority of those who have gone high in the mainstreams of academics. Okay. And that means I'm bringing to the board even the international bodies. So for you to sit for uh, a scholarly um, aptitude test like SAT, you have to write math too. Math is one of the subjects you write. For you to go, to, for you to write, I mean, to gain admission in some of these European schools, even the, the United Kingdom, you will have to sit for um, IGCSE exams, you know. To go to Canada, you have to at least get started. So, and for all these exams, examination bodies, you must have to write mathematics. Now, is it is it that if you're going to study law, you'll be studying mathematics in university? No. Like I said, let me tell you, let me tell you something about maths. Why this board have made mathematics very important, and that. That means my answer to the question will be yes, it should be made compulsory. The reason is this. There are some subjects, oh, sorry, there are some topics in mathematics that do not actually have industrial application. Okay. So I am saying that it is not every topic in mathematics that has industrial application. Some of them have the, I mean, they have our neural, neural application. That means they have to do with the brain. Okay. What it means is that there are some topics you study in mathematics that help develop your brain. Do you know that so many cells in our brain they are very they are dormant? We mm. have about 2.5 petabytes mm. of brain cells, and 2.5 petabytes, one petabyte is about one million um, gigahertz. I mean a uh, gig which is the unit for memory, mm. you know. So the brain is very large and it can accommodate as much as possible. And for you to be exploitive in achievements, it means you, you have to develop your brain. Okay. And developing your brain requires that you, you, you immerse yourself in, in the thinking world. And okay. mathematics is the tool for that development. So if I want to develop my neural pathway, I delve into thinking. I delve into logical and analytical thinking. And this can only be given to me by mathematics. Okay, so in, in, in a nutshell, you do not uh, propose uh, that it should be optional. Okay, it should be compulsory, mandatory. Okay, uh, all right, okay. Now, um, um, the final question I'm going to put to you is this. Um, do you think there is a difference between math and the real world? Do you see any difference? Well, if you keep maths out of this world, it is as good as asking Jesus Christ to come. Okay. Like the world should come to an end. Oh, wow. Uh, please, can you indicate <laughs> that uh, proposition? That's it, man. <laughs> if we take maths out of this world, we find ourselves in the dark age where no information, no technology, nothing will be happening. The world will be a very dormant and boring place. So, Mathematics is a tool that keeps the hopes, the, the hope of man going. And that is because it keeps us busy. How? We keep thinking our hope comes because of mathematics. Oh, like today you are sitting here, you are thinking, oh, between now and let me see between now and March next year, March next year, I should be having four hundred thousand naira, I should be have having two point five million. If I have two point five million and I do this, I should be able to produce this and that. You are bringing mathematics into the real world. So we consciously and unconsciously enjoy sleep to discuss dance mathematics. So keep it out of here and keep human out of here. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, thank you so much. I'm afraid this is where we have to uh, take a wrap or, or do a curtain mm -hmm. on the show. Uh, we, with utmost uh, uh, pleasure, and um, uh, I must say that thank you for coming on interview my, my with Stevie uh -huh. Okay, if you are, this is where we will take a wrap or do a curtain on today's uh, show. We look forward to uh, seeing you on our next show. From me to you, uh, Mr. Roland, who came from
uh, Oasis Canadian School, the only Canadian official school in Nigeria. We say bye bye. Thank you. Bye.